Hello everybody and welcome back. Last time we did some stitching with a suede pouch, beautiful suede pouch. Um, today we are going to get into something a little bit more traditional and a little bit more cultural and a whole lot more spiritual. Today we are going to finally get to dream catchers. Uh, you can see we got one here. This one is actually a custom handmade one. Um, I did use metal. Uh, traditional dream catchers you would use a willow branch that's circled and then uh, wrapped with the leather and then um, animal sinew for the webbing in the middle with some decorative beads or um, other kind of ornamentation and then of course you have your uh, decorative beads and your feathers on it. Um, this one that we're going to be doing today is significantly smaller. It comes from uh, Real Leather Crafts, uh, Silver Creek Leather Company. Uh, I picked these up, I'm not advocating the use of these uh, specific products, but I picked these up from the Hobby Lobby in town here, and um, these are the ones I used to go with. Um, dream catchers are one of my favorite things to make, uh, probably anything, like whether it be wood, leather, um, metal, whatever. I love doing dream catchers for some reason. And this is probably going to be like the 10th or 11th one I've made so far. Um, I made some for different family members and given them out. We got a couple of them here throughout the house in different spots. And I, I don't know, I just, there's something about them, I don't know. Maybe you'll feel that way too. So, um, like I said, I'm not sponsored by or advocating or telling you to purchase this product. But if you want to follow along with me, I'm giving you the information you need to be able to follow along. Um, these take a little bit longer to do mostly because there's gluing and drying and all that fun stuff involved so today we're gonna get this started um, and we'll be filming the entirety of it we'll put it all together nice and we'll get this video up to you all so that you have it and that you guys can continue your journey on leather working if you're following along with me so uh, with that let's get started all right, folks, we're back in the saddle again. We got the mini dream catcher kit. It says we're going to need, oh, you know what? We don't have the scissors again. We're going to have to rectify that in a second here, but let's get this kit open and see what's all in here. All right, we got, per use, we got the instructions. We got, um, like I said, beads and uh, feather decorations. And we got our metal ring. And a uh, leather cord. So it looks like we got to cut a specified measurement off of here. Well, we might not need the ruler. We might just have to use it. Or we might not need the scissors. I can head knife cut this. <clears throat> so let's get our fancy head knife. You could actually use the little exacto too. Oops, let's bring her down with the exacto. We could use that too, but let's go with the head knife because it's more like leather worky. Alright, so we got that bad boy down. We need a tape measure. So we're in 44 inches, it says. 44 inches of lace. Um, do, 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 do. Hopefully that gives us a little extra. Um, this will be a little bit off camera probably. So we'll start, we'll, we'll actually do it this way. Pin 32. So we pin 32 and we're gonna do like two inches over, just to be safe. So here we go. We're going to 46, so we're going to pull this. Doesn't have to be like perfect. Just get close. All right, so that's our 44 inches of lace. And then it gives us this bit left over. This is going to be the trim that goes on the bottom of it. So we'll put that off to the side. We could get rid of this. So this is where it's going to become like a, a longer process. So you actually have to glue this lace onto this ring. 
as you're going around you're gonna weave it in and pull it through kind of like stitching a little bit um, as you're going through you keep it straight you push it together and you glue it and you pin it down and eventually it's going to kind of stick. Um, glue, just your regular uh, Elmer's or whatever, school glue, uh, school glue, which I've seen that five times fast. I ain't going to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And um, the other part of it is clamps. So you're going to want to clamp. Uh, you can use clothespins or you can buy little crafting clamps. I got crafting clamps. Well, actually, I need more. I'm gonna have to put that on the shopping list. We got a couple of them in here right now. We got three. So we're gonna make do with what we got. We got one. This one's gonna be the one that holds the end. And then, um, should they gonna hold the end? I think so. Yeah, we'll hold the end with this one. And then we're gonna use these bag clips, just regular bag clips. Uh, these are just like little clamps you can get. They're for car modeling, but you can use them for just about anything. And we're gonna get a little bit of glue up on here and get this started. Maybe we will. Um, I also did those beforehand. Especially if you're working with lighter colored leathers, make sure that you uh, that you wash your hands before because if your hands are the glue will come out clear, but if your hands are dirty, it's gonna mess things up. So what I do is I put some glue on the, all around on the ring just to get it started. Um, once we get this ring done, it's actually gonna be a little bit of intermission um, time to do this. Um, what you can do if you're going to mass produce these is you can um, put together multiples at one time uh, the ring step and then uh, wait until the next day to do that uh, we're probably going to do that here too um, you guys won't know because of the magic of movie and camera where it'll look like we we just done this and we're ready to go but we'll make sure that we i'd let you guys know exactly how much time i let pause okay so we got it nice and tight here and what we're going to want to do is just get this clamp down to hold in place. Uh, oops, a little bit. There we go. So you want to be able to push as you're going through and you're going around here. Um, we got a little bit of it glued up or glued up. You got to push and kind of keep everything tight as you're going around. You don't want any bumps. Actually, I think we're going to get a bump right off the bat. Um, let's put the clamp on after we get a little bit further. So kind of twisting with your fingers counterclockwise as you're bringing this down. The idea is to get glue on the inside here. Oops. Make sure we're in, yeah, we're good in here. Um, we'll zoom it in in a second here once I get a little bit more glue down. Your fingers are going to get dirty. It's school glue. It comes up with water. Um, it's inevitable. Just go with the flow. Enjoy it. Sometimes messy fun is good fun. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Make sure we're still in a good spot. There we go. So like right around here is a good spot. So we're going to keep going. We're going around in a circle here. I'm going to hold on to this end for a while before we go because I noticed that even with the clamp on it was coming loose we want a nice tight uh, fit around here we're doing something we want to make sure we do it right we do the best we can get better at it over time just like with anything else content creation life get better as we do it more often All right, so we're coming around here some more. We're coming to the end of our first batch of, or our next batch of glue, so we're gonna have to come back to that. Uh, still pulling tight every time. You can see we got a section here done up, so we're gonna clamp her up. Now it should hold in place all right. And now we're gonna get another section of glue. You don't want to go too far with the glue right away because it's going to dry up and dry glue is useless glue so let's keep on going um, notice i'm keeping my fingers tight where i'm kind of working 
So that way I can keep it pressed down. I'm pulling this strand, it may not look like it, but I'm actually pulling it tight as I'm going around. And every few revolutions around here, I'm going to push up so that it comes up tight into place. Um, you may notice that there's some glue seepage coming out. That's fine. It's going to go away. All right, so we're continuing on here. Making our way through. So you can see it's nice and nice and tight here. Um, you can roll off the glue as you get as you get some on your fingers too if you want to. Like I said, it's not gonna matter too much at the end of the day. It's gonna dry on this leather clear. Alright, now we're at another section here. So we're going to get some more glue. Now that you all got the point, we're going to let the magic of movie get us going. Alright, we're getting close to the edge here. little ways to go. Good thing I cut that extra two inches because I think I'm going to need it. It's probably a good couple extra inches choke in there too. By the way, you guys. Alright, so see this is pretty well dry already. Now we're going to come up here and get this top. This last little bit. Um, we are going to have a little bit of overlap, which is okay because we'll be able to cut that off. It's just more important that you have enough instead of not enough because fixing a not enough is a whole lot worse. All right, so we got covered up pretty well. We're going to do a spook. I don't want to do that. Spin on this side. There we go. I want to make sure we got everything as close to closed off as possible. There. We got a little bit of gappy right there, so we're going to fill that in. Put a little glue on there, too. Alright, so. Now, there is going to be a little bit of a button here on the end, but that's okay because that's where your handle for it's going to be. So, let's give you a close up. You can see that there's glue on here, and there'll be a little bit of cleanup that we got to do, but not too terrible. There you go. You can get a good look at it. So, that's our finished ring. So, now we just have to uh, let this all dry for a little while, get it cleaned up, and then we'll be ready to go on to the next step. All right, so we're on the part where we're going to start making the actual spider web. Uh, you'll notice over here, uh, you can see the pile of Sino. We actually, I did a test run of it with the Sino that they provided in the kit. Um, it was split in three to four strands, pretty much the entirety of the of the kit. So it's not going to work out. Uh, what we're going to be doing is a half hitch knot. So. Essentially, you're going to look for a starting point. Uh, I like to start where I got like a spot where you can see bare metal. And we're going to come through. We're going to come across here. We're going to come down. We're going to bring this over the top. And we're going to slide it underneath. And that's how it's going to start. See, this one's splitting a little bit too. I don't know why it's doing that. So we're putting that in there and that's going to be our starting point. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going about, I'd say about a thumb space. I usually use like my, my index finger or my pointer finger, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to come down through here. We're going to come around through the top. 
And it's important that you tie these tight every time. Um, if you don't tie them tight and keep pulling it tight as you're going through, it's going to make it not want to work out. So we're going to come through here. And this is actually going to take a, it takes a bit to get used to. And I should have been keeping up on this, but you know, in all honesty, I haven't been doing much um, leather working as of late. So I haven't. So you want a little bit of a, little bit of a gap here, but not a terrible amount, just a little bit. Um, then we're going to come back through here. We're going to do another thumb space. You're going to go over, over the metal. I'm going to go under like so and then you're going to go through as you're going through you're going to be tightening it up again so uh, make sure that you pull it tight keep everything nice and tight all right so we're coming through here so you can see we got another nice little gap here Pull this nice and tight. So we got two loops so far. See, and these loops aren't going to stay tight. Um, you have to be careful with them. All right, so we got that one. So we're going to come through here again. And just like so. And we're going to do this until we get all the way around. And then we'll let the magic of video editing let us speed this up for you. And we'll get to the next step where we got to go into these inside pieces. All right, so you can see we got all the way around now. We got loopies going all the way around. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into the second layer of these. And we're going to be creating inner loops. And we're going to be um, pulling tight as we do this. And this should theoretically pull all these tight. Um, like I said, it's important to keep these tight as you're going around. These look a lot better than the sinew that I was using before, so I'm happy with that. So we're going to come through, um, and we're going to start with this loop here. So let's get down onto this loop. All right, we're down on it. We're gonna go over the top of it. Okay, so it's between the spans. Okay, so we're gonna go over this span and we're gonna come to this span. So let's just do A loop around this span here. So we get it into place there. So now we're going to start, we're going to come onto this loop. And we're going to get shit all over the place. All right, so we're coming through. We've come through the loop. There's our little notch here. And see this Ceno starting to split too. Um, when the Ceno splits, it makes it tons more difficult to do this. So we're gonna come down and come through like so. And you want to have a, you need to have a gap. So you gotta have a, you gotta be building a loop on the bottom. So we should have. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So there's our first loop. So here it is. There. Pull it tight. Pulling it tight is really going to matter now because we're going to be pulling against these now. All right, so we're coming down and through. Again, we're given, we're making sure that we have a little bit of a gap down there, fingers width again. We're going to come through like so. And again, we're pulling it tight. So we want to pull these tight because we want it to start making. And see, you can see it's starting to pull tight and it's starting to actually make a web there. So now we're going to come up on this one. We're 
and come through. Um, if you were beading in the inside of it, um, now is when you would be doing that as well, but we're not doing that this time around, so um, no need to worry about that. All right, so we got our, here's where our hole, our loop is gonna be, where my finger is. So we're coming back through. We're gonna pull this tight again. Now we're gonna pull it tight here. So you can see we got a little bit of loop edge going on there. There we go. It's not as this this project with a small like this is a lot more difficult to do, um, and the results aren't necessarily as great. But it's a great starter kit to get used to doing this, and that's why we're doing this. We're trying to get used to it. Okay, so let's go back up here. Um, we're going to finger width again, and we're going to come through there and we're going to come through again here like so and we're going to pull it tight there we go and here we are again uh, next one we're going to loop it go under go through it and go through here Really starting to run out of room. All right, so we need a little figure space there. We're going to do one more. We're going to do the one right here, and then that's what we're going to. Oh, wow, that's really small. Um, this is going to be the most difficult one out of all of them, but we're going to try it. Go through that really small one. Zip this through. We're going to bring it back up through here. Um, put our finger back through. So we want to keep that uh, finger spacing. And here's our last one. All right, so what we've got is a unique pattern. Um, we're going to have to cut carefully this off here at the end. Is this some dollar or what? There we go. All right, so this is what we got for our pattern. Um, we gotta cut this other end off here. So we're gonna cut that off. You wanna be as clean as you can. There you go. And then uh, for this one on the top, we're just gonna give it a little bit of singe with the lighter because we want it to melt in. Um, these ones on the inside, you don't wanna really mess with. So we got that part. All right, so now we're on step. the last step. So we gotta cut 12 inch length and two eight inch lengths with the stuff that was left over. So with this stuff that we had left over, we're gonna come over here. And this is what I like about this board. Uh, this is one of those Fisker boards. Um, you can use any kind that you want to. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. We're not keeping that. Um, you're not going to save any of those scraps. The Sino scraps, they don't work very well. So we got 12 inches that we're going to do, roughly. All right, so we got point here, point there. So we'll just kind of put our finger down there. Mark it. All right, and then they said two eight inch strips. So we got an eight inch strip here. Oops. That would have been seven. And then this last one, oh, that's not gonna be eight inches. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so we're gonna have to do something a little bit different. Those scraps we're going to put off to the side, and we're going to grab I have some leftover. That's why you always keep your scraps, folks. So these are, this is a little bit lighter, but we're doing this for the project. There we go. All right, so we got an eight inch strip here. We'll cut through it. I should have actually used a head knife for this, so it would have been a lot easier. And we got 
oops, eight incher here. I just gotta make sure I didn't cut that too short. I think I did. No, we're good. Okay, so those are eight inch. Uh, that scrap will put out to the side. Make sure those will put. I have a bin where I keep all of those lace straps. All right, so we got those. We're gonna go fancy for this whole thing. So we'll take those off to the side. We're gonna cut a uh, new with uh, blue suede. That's why you always have some materials around. Let's grab our head, do this the easy way. All right, so we needed a 12 inch one. And two eight inch ones. So we got eight inch number one. And eight inch number two. All right, so we're just gonna be doing the same thing that we just did. Just with these thinner laces. So we're coming through with this one. This adds a little bit of color to it too, so you know, ideally you have enough of the other material, but unfortunately that didn't happen for us this time. All right, so we're just gonna make sure we're going the same way again with our Lurks head knot. Do -do -do. Yep, we're good. All right, so we got these two. We're gonna do the same thing at the top again. This one I might end up doing backwards. Just the opposite direction. But if I go like this, we should be all right. There. All right, there. So these are kind of short for having those. Yeah, that should be all right. Okay, so we're gonna tie this. These are kind of a pain that the laces are kind of a pain to tie, especially if you want to have a long enough handle up on the top. There we go. Okay, we did all right. There. All right, so we got that. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, as the last step, we're going to be decorating the bottom here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get one of these on the outside. There we go. That guy up there. Actually, wait. Let's do orange. That's pretty funky. Let's do an orange one first. On this outside, orange one. And then the big guy. And then the hardest part is going to be tying these off. Um, don't have a lot of real estate, so you gotta really try to get it in there. Um, we'll do the feathers as the last step because that's the worst part. It's gonna be the feathers. Okay, so we got those. Um, these bigger beads are kind of hard to mess with. Sometimes I don't even put them in. All right, so we got orange and we got a bead here. So we're going to tie this one off too. Uh, sometimes it does help to have like a small, like a jeweler's players too for like this to be able to grab these ends if you can't get them. There we go. Okay, so we got the two like that. Now we just got this inside one. Uh, we got, let's see, we got blues. 
We're missing one. Is there seriously only one green? Or did we like. Oh, that was close. I think we only got one green. Uh, the green could have been the bead in the inside. So we'll just put that green out to the side. And we'll look, look at it. We got red, white, and blue for America. We'll do red. White. Blue. All right. Now, same thing. You have to tie these off. And actually, if you're like, if you're not using the kit materials and you're using your own stuff, it might be better to cut a little bit longer than eight inches because it's actually easier to just cut off the excess after you make the knot than it is to try to force a knot with shorter material. So if that's one thing I could like give you guys as a tip as we're going through this, um, that's probably what I would say. Um, should we go backwards this time? Yeah, we'll do blue. Wait. There's no right or wrong answer here, folks. Let's do it how you wanna how you wanna make it. Alright. So pull that a little tighter so we can get this knot. There we go. Alright, now I promised that we were gonna do the feathers, so we're gonna get those in last. So what you do is you need glue for this part. So let's see, there's one yellow and one green, so we'll put those ones on the inside. I don't like how these are like not even matched, but um, when I make these by hand, when I make these by hand, when I was making them, I actually bought the feathers separately from the hobby store. You can buy packs of different kinds of feathers. It's kind of cool because you can like, get all kinds of wicked looking feathers and you can put them in there. All right, so we're going to put this guy up in there. So we got that. Alright, now we said we we're going to do the green one next, so we're going to open this spot up here a little bit. A little bit of glue on there, and you don't need a whole lot of glue for these. Shit. You don't want to do that either, because it will actually leave blue blemish on the feather. Alright, so we got those two in there like that. And now we'll do the blue underneath the blue palette. I'm gonna have to buy some more glue. First, I'm squeezing the shit out of it. Come here, glue. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go a little blue. We're only gonna use one of those red ones. So we're gonna shove that blue in there like that. All right. So that's actually the inside one. Okay. Now we're gonna get one of these red ones in up on. Actually, the beading going reverse on the beading worked out really good with these feathers. So that was a good idea. And there you have it. It'll dry. And we got ourselves a dream catcher, folks. All right, everybody. Now, that was an adventure. That did not go as, as I thought it was going to be. There was a lot of complications I didn't foresee. I mean, I've done plenty of these before. But, you know, in fairness, I took about a year off from all of this stuff. And we're just getting back into it. So, um and like I said, the kits are great for starting out. They're good for trying them, but they're not necessarily the best in terms of the material that they're going to provide you. Um, lacks customization. And, um, you know, as you saw, we ended up having to scrap out the sinew that came with it. We had to change out the the suede uh, lace that we were using and it was, a, it was an adventure it was a bit much so I hope you guys learn from this I hope that these videos are helping you find some enjoyment in um, leather crafting or maybe even just thinking about a different hobby you've been thinking about trying and giving you that little push that you need to get over the edge and go try it um, adventure is in all kinds of forms and it can be a craft it can be a travel location it could be um, a job even so make sure you're out there find an adventure go look for it until next time peace